guys and welcome to spoiler discussion of 172 hours on the moon by Johan Harstad and if you have not read this book go away like what are you doing here go away shoo you can take out my non-spoiler review for this one but right now we're gonna talk spoilers heavy spoilers like go you have three seconds three two one go okay so spoiler 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 they all die they all die! I'm not over it. I just... Uh, usually in books when I read something like, sort of like of the sort, like Hunger Games or whatever, I'm like, oh, of course she went out unharmed. Of course they all lived because they're the protagonist. And of course they're going to survive. Of course they're going to make it alive. It's the most obvious and, like, obvious way to go. <laughs> and I sort of kind of want them to die. Often it happens that that happens often, but in this book, no life was spared, and I, I, I can't believe it. But I, I wanted them to live. I wanted some of them to die. I didn't want to see some of them dead. Not because I didn't care for them. I, I, I felt so bad, and I was like, no, don't die. But like, you want to see a few of them like die. It's part of the excitement, you know. You, they can't all go alive. They can't. You just can't. But not all of them. <laughs> like maybe one teenager, <laughs> maybe one. But like not not all of them. Like I mentioned in my other review, the, the five grown-ups in the mission. Like we don't really get to know them, but we, we the the author gives us just a little bit about them, just the li little facts, little emotional facts that make you go like, okay, I kind of want you to live. It's enough to care a little bit about them, you know, because otherwise I wouldn't give a fuck. But that, that, that was really smart about the author, you know, just a little bit of memory, a little bit of this, enough to make you care. And I was like, what an asshole you are, author, what an asshole. Funny enough, we know a lot more about the teenagers, but I didn't really care that much about them, like in general aspects. But once they were on the moon, I was scared to death for them. Like, Antoine just went away so cruelly, and I was like, no, no. It was just fucked up. It was just so fucked up. I've said that a ton of times right now, but that's the one thing that's in my mind right now. It's so fucked up. I love that the moment that they step on the moon, bat shit happens. The author didn't even wait like a day or two. It was just right off the bait, you know? The radio signal starts to fail. Try to fix it. Boom! You dead. <laughs> it's just like everything is just so bad. And. and it's so sad. It's just really sad. If it had happened, I know it's a fiction. It's, they're fictional characters, but I still feel so bad for them because they knew what was coming, and they like well, at least they knew what was coming because they don't know what that thing is, but it's coming for them, and they know that, and it's just a, such a dreadful feeling of knowing you're going to die, and there's not much you can do about it because they kind of know they're going to die. They're, they're hanging on to dear life because there's nothing else they can do, and it's the instinctive thing to do, but they know that the chances of surviving are slim, and it's out there, and it's coming for them, and they are alone in the moon. Not even in the whole planet, in the base, in the Darla base. It's... Uh, oh, oh. My heart was pounding. I could, I couldn't even, and I just felt so bad for each and every one of the characters, except for Caitlyn. I wanted her to die. I didn't want her to die. She died kind of gruesomely, but I wanted her to die. I get that it was obvious that she was going to lose it, but like it was annoying. The moment a character begins to lose its cool in any horror movie, in any type of science fiction, anything, they die. They're the first ones to go. She had to go. It was a lot to take in. There was a lot to take in. There was a little bit of stuff that bothered me. I mean, I mean the whole thing was like, it left me feeling so sad. I was so sad when I finished with the book. I was just sad for days. Um, but there were things that didn't really make sense. There was a lot of stuff that didn't make sense. But in the writing style, I'm talking about like, when they, when, when we see parts of Antonina's girlfriend, we just see her like a little bit and then never again and I was like there's something weird there it was it was really inconclusive in many things they were just like left there hanging like why bring it up why, why bring it up if you're gonna just leave it there hanging or like the weird visions that, that Antoine had like that's never explained why the numbers appearing the, the, the thing that's on on the moon supposedly hasn't been to earth and can't get really can't, can't really get to earth but it sent signals 
I didn't even know that those things, that the, that the three teeny girls were going to the moon. That didn't make any sense. And to why warn them that they shouldn't go if you're just gonna kill them the moment they get there? What? Or the thing Midori finds in the bathroom when she's going to, uh, like, th that tells her not to go? What was that? Was it some sort of other force that told them not to go? They do mention that the moon can be sort of like hell, and it's kind of, that's kind of cool. Kind of ridiculous once I like, like I say it out loud, but it's, it sounds kind of cool to think that it could be like hell. That you like, you can like see it from ha right, right from the earth, like it's right there. Such a huge dark evil that you can see every night there, so close yet so far, and like it can't get here, but it can. That was kind of cool, but but it brings the question: like, is Earth heaven? W was it some kind of good force trying to warn them not to go to the moon, or was it the moon evil thingy? I don't know. Then of course there's the fact that the last page, the very last page, where it turns out that Mia died in the moon. She actually died in the moon. She never actually made it back. She like went out of the Darla base and just killed herself. What happened there? I did see the ending coming. I, I did I, I did thought of it. I was still surprised, but I did see it coming. It was like, yeah, of course she's gonna come like here, like unharmed, and then she's gonna turn bat shit evil. I s <coughs> I'm joking with my own saliva. Ugh. I saw that coming, but it still doesn't make sense because why the whole drama of her fighting with Midori in the in Darla Base One? Why why all the pounding on the glass when she's like about to leave on the little spaceship emergency capsule. Why would they show us that if it was the same evil thing fighting the same evil thing? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. It, it Was it acted? Did it actually happen? Because it, it's not Mia who gets back to Earth. Uh, I, I thought like maybe she got possessed on the way here or some trace of it like sort of consumed her. But it didn't because if they found her body on the moon it means she always stayed on the moon. She never made it back and it's so weird. It's so weird. I gotta give it to Johan Harstad for killing absolutely everyone. Even her like little brother. <sighs> it was like, that was just cruel. That was so cruel. I would have loved to know what else happened. Like the aftermath, the aftermath of everything. I think my biggest question of all is that Johan Harstad really, really know what was on the moon? Did he actually thought it out? Does he actually know what it is? Does he actually have answers to all of these questions and he's just not sharing them? Or did he just thought like, oh, it would be cool to have this, this and that, and like, hmm, it doesn't make sense, but I can fake it and make it like that. Yeah, I have no answers to anything, but I'll make it dark and mysterious. I want to know that. Does it actually make sense in his head? Or is he just like, yeah. So let me guys, let me guys, if you know you read it, what the fuck am I saying? So yeah. Let me know if you liked it because I'm assuming you read it if you are here. If you didn't read it and you're just checking out the spoiler section, shame on you. Shame on you. I was very creeped out in the end. I didn't really enjoy it. I was just sad all the time and stressed and really, 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 really sad. I don't feel happy. Do let me know your theories in the comments section. I would love to know what you thought, what you like thought of, you know, theories, any anything? Do you know something that I don't know that Johan Harstad said? Because I tried searching for his interviews, but they are not in English, so I didn't understand the shit. Do let me know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Star baby, star baby, star baby. Hi guys, it's finally holiday season, and there is a tree behind me. Yay! I am so happy for Christmas. I'm just so so excited about this holiday season. I am feeling really pumped up and very Christmassy. I have a red sweater in case you hadn't noticed. I turned on the fan because it's definitely not cold outside. It's so not cold. It's hot. It's really hot outside right now. It's like it's a beautiful blazing sun. But I hate the sun, so yeah. <laughs>